it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video about Home Assistant. Today I wanted to talk about updates. So updates are super important when you're talking about anything that has to do with technology these days. Everybody should kind of understand that, you know, right from the get-go. It's important to keep up with updates because there's security fixes, there's improvements to the user interface, there's improvements to efficiency. There's just so many things that you get out of an update that these days it's often much more worth it to do the update than to hold back on it. But that said, you do want to plan updates for time where you have a little bit of time to sit and potentially have things go wrong where you can fix those things. And that's really with any kind of software, but especially self-hosted software. Um, it's very important that you have time to do that because there's nobody else that's going to do it. If you're self-hosting, it's up to you. So I wanted to talk about doing updates and making sure that you've got everything kind of going in order. And here you can see that they just released um, the the May uh, release for Home Assistant and they do monthly releases now which is great and actually a few releases a month to do different uh, things and fix things but this one doesn't have a lot of UI updates specifically but it has a lot of um, under the hood changes to make things more efficient. So today I want to go through actually doing the update and showing you the process that I go through to make sure that I feel very comfortable doing these updates each time that I do them and we'll get into it right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right, before we get into this, the first thing I like to do before I do any update is come over to the snapshot screen. And you, you can see here I've got a few snapshots I've already made. But I'll give this a, a, a little uh, name here, pre-may update. And I'll just call it number one. Okay, this is the snapshot name. I'm going to do a full snapshot. Now you can actually do partial snapshots. You don't have to do a full snapshot. So you can see here that you've got different options about what you're going to actually take the snapshot for. And I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit on the screen, maybe make it a little bit easier for, for everybody that's looking at it on a phone or something. But here we've got the Home Assistant configuration, SSL, share, media, local add-ons. Then here are all my add-ons that I can back up as well. So the more add-ons that you get, you may have things that are pretty large files and it may not be worth it for you to back them up every single time. You may just want to update or back up core items. Um, you can password protect your backups as well, your snapshots. But when you start looking at doing these partial snapshots, one thing you may want to consider is your media folder. If you have media that you're storing in a certain place and it's part of the main Home Assistant uh, system, you may want to put this as external somehow and map it so that you don't have that stuff being stored on your home assistant system but in other, you know in another place with you know NAS or something like that so you could uncheck that box so that you're not trying to make a snapshot of large video files and things like that but just know that you can do partial I don't I don't have anything stored that's super huge so I'm just going to do a a full snapshot here and again you can password protect this if you check that you just type in a password and that's what you need in order to unencrypt this thing and get it back in, in running order. I don't really feel like I need that so I'm just going to hit the create button. So now we've got the snapshot created. I'm going to click on it here. It's going to open up and show me everything that it's got in it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to download that snapshot to the machine that I'm actually accessing Home Assistant from. So I'm going to click on download. I'm just going to say save file and I can see what it's called right here. I'm just going to click OK you'll see up here that it has downloaded. You can just double check that. If you're in Firefox, it's up at the top. If you're on Chrome, it shows up here at the bottom, but make sure it finishes downloading. Once that's complete, you can close that window out. And now we're gonna go back over here to the dashboard and we'll see that we have this core update available. So you can check out the release notes. So we can right click, uh, or actually we can just click. It'll take us and open up a new tab. So you can see here, I've still got that tab. And we can read the release notes and it says stability, performance, triggers, and color modes which is great. So they'll tell you all about the things that are involved or that are included in this update. And this is really important information. I know a lot of people just skip over the release notes a lot of times. I do the same thing. But 
it's actually pretty important to go out and kind of check these things when you're talking about home automation where you've actually got this in production and it's controlling things for your home you kind of want to know like are there any breaking changes that I need to be aware of before I start using this thing so as you go down you can just kind of see the things that they're talking about check it out make sure you don't see anything that's like a big red flag before you do this something you may need to prepare for ahead of time once you're satisfied with that you just come back into the system here and you can click on update and it's going to verify it's going to say hey do you want to do a snapshot which is nice so I already did it I always do it first but if you didn't it's going to remind you like hey you may want to do this so you can just click the little on button and it'll make one for you um, I'm just going to turn it off since I've already done it and I'm going to say update we're going to let this run I don't know how long it'll take but we'll let it go and we'll just find out so one of the things that you can watch is over here on the reconnecting kind of message that it gives you. So it tells you connection loss reconnecting. And usually this means that it's, it's done with the update part and it's actually rebooting Home Assistant. And one of the new things that they've added is if your Home Assistant seems to take a long time rebooting, you could have an add-on or an integration that is very slow to start and maybe it needs a, an update or maybe it needs uh, you know some logs to be sent to the developer. Who knows? But It'll, it'll now tell you down here like, hey, in a minute it's going to say, hey, we're rebooting. This may take a minute um, or, we're, you know, we're starting to connect, but not everything's available. And it'll tell you like, we're starting up this, this add-on, then we're starting up this add-on. If you see it hang on a certain add-on or a certain in integration for a while, that'll give you an indicator of why your home assistant may take a long time to reboot. Um, so we'll, we'll give this a minute and see how it goes. But, of course, it's installing updates and things like that, too, so... Here it goes, it's restarting and refreshing, which is, you know, a good sign. So that means that everything is running the way that we expect, which is good, and we want that. And there we go, it looks like everything has come up and reconnected pretty fast, so I don't appear to have any issues with the integrations that I've got going. And now you can see that the update message is gone from the dashboard, and I can still see all of my snapshots over here. Um, so everything's looking pretty good. Now the next thing to check is to go to your dashboard. Make sure all of your integrations look like they're still set up and running. Looks like everything's being read. I can see that my coffee pot's still on in the house. I can see the temperature in my, uh, in, in my system here for my air conditioning, uh, my sensors in the house, and then also my alarm system looks good. And I can just check other tabs to see what's going on. I can see that my backyard camera seems to be running. I can kind of see the tree moving there, which is great. And I can see that my lights for my decorations out in the front are good. There went a bird. Awesome. Um, so everything's looking pretty good there. And if I, again, if I come to my office, I can see that I do have the office light on and nothing else is on, which is what I would expect. So everything looks like it's running well. The update seems to have worked just fine. And now we're back up and running. Had anything gone wrong, I had the snapshot that I could just bring right back up with a with a clean install and it would have been right back like it was before I started the update process and I'd give me time to dig into the update to see what happened and figure out how to fix the problem. I want to mention real quick that I have created a space for us to start getting together and talking and having conversations and it's called discuss.opensourceisawesome.com that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com it has chat, we can do video conferences, we can do phone calls, you guys are free to jump in and use it as long as you're just being respectful and polite. I have no problem with using it for other things as well. So if you go to it through the web, you can create a login and you can use Google, you can use GitHub, or you can actually log into the system and create your own account. It's up to you how you do that. But you can also get the standalone application for Rocket Chat and use it as well, which is what I like to use on the desktop because I get notifications of new messages. And I can see when you guys come in and ask me questions or chat. But this is a great way to get a hold of me. It's kind of my preferred method these days as I can check it on my phone, I can check it on my desktop, and it works really well. If you guys want to reach out, if you want to reach out to each other and start asking for help, I've got several channels set up here and we can always set up more. So I hope you'll give this a shot at discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. And I hope to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.